بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله we move on to our 17th lesson in this series on hell revealed today it's regarding the people of hellfire wanting to come out calling for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let them out somehow trying to escape somehow trying to get a release from the hellfire and the discussion surrounding that now in terms of this there's actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses this in several verses uh, in the Quran may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from ever being in that state but it's a really really sorry state that it's going to be the way it's been depicted and mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 106 to 108. <laughs> They would say, our Lord, our wretchedness has dominated us, has overwhelmed us, has taken over us. And we were a misled people. We were a deviated group. Our Lord, remove us. Allow us to come out of this. And if we were ever to return to this, then we would definitely be oppressors. They're asking for another chance. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, ikhsa'u fiha, be wretched therein, remain therein in loss, and don't even speak, don't even speak. Allah doesn't want to even listen to them. When you don't want to listen to somebody, it means that you don't want to entertain anything from them. Don't even speak about it, because humans were affected by the way when we see someone in a sorry state, we get affected by them, our Mercy kicks in, our compassion takes over. So that's why it says Allah will not even look at them. So that when you look at someone, your compassion takes over. So Allah will not look at them. The other thing is that when somebody speaks and they just, the sorry state of their words, the wording they use, the statements they make, the sound of their voice, all of that could trigger compassion and mercy. So Allah doesn't want them to even speak. Now you can tell that that means that He just doesn't want anything to happen from them. Somebody says, okay, what's your excuse? Okay, all right, go on, speak. It means that they're willing to give you an excuse. There seems to be a chance. They say, no, no, don't even speak anymore. That's it. Then in Surah Al-Zukhruf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكْ قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ they then will call, meaning they will call Ya Malik, meaning the guardian of hellfire. May our Lord just, may your Lord just finish our matter, make a final judgment, finish us off, complete the state. Say, no, you're going to stay here. You're going to remain like this. You're going to stay there. Then in Surah Al-Ghafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse 49 and 50, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمَ دُعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِّنَ الْعَذَابِ قَالُوا أَوَلَمْ تَكُ تَأْتِيكُمْ رُسُلُكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالُوا بَلَى فَدُعُوهُ وَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالِ Those who are in the hellfire will say to the guardians of Jahannam, call on to your Lord that he may, he may lighten the punishment for us for even a day. At least give us one day of respite. They will respond and say, and remind them, they will chide them almost, saying that didn't your messengers used to come to you with clear signs, evidences? They would say, of course they used to. Then they would, it would be said to them, okay, just call them. Keep calling. But the prayers, the calling, the pleas of the disbelievers will be nothing except in vain. They'll just be in vain. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fatir, verse 37, وَهُمْ يَسْتَرِخُونَ فِيهَا وَهُمْ يَسْتَرِخُونَ فِيهَا رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي كُنَّا نَعْمَلْ أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ فَذُوقُوا فَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ نَصِيرُ They'll be screaming, shrieking therein, saying, Our Lord, remove us from here, take us out. We will do good deeds now, different to the ones that we used to do. The response will be, didn't we give you enough of life in which those who wanted to take heed, accept the reminders, would have reflected and done so? And the warner also came to you? So now you taste it. You indulge in it. And for those who are oppressors, there will be no body to help them and defend them. So those are the verses. I said quite a few verses about their expressions and their hopes to get out, their pleas to be taken out. So it is a hadith that's related from Abu Darda radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said with regards to now all of these verses in the hadith and from our other predecessors, uh, they've put them in perspective. So the Quranic verses are quite general. They've been mentioned, but then our, the hadith have put them in perspective as to when each of these will be stated. It's really interesting. So in this case, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in Hilfah and say, mentioned, فَيَقُولُونَ ud'u خَزَنَةَ jahannam. They will call, say, call the guardians of hellfire. And that, so then they would say that the guardians of hellfire will respond and say, didn't your messengers used to come to you with the clear signs? And then they will continue to say, so call, keep calling, but their calls aren't going to get anywhere. Then yeah, they will say, um, call Malik, who's the head of the, the guardians of hellfire. And so then they will say, ya Malik, liyaqdi alayna rabbuk. If nothing, if you can't take us out, then just end us. Finish it off. But then the response will be that you're going to stay. Um, Imam Al-A'mash, who's one of the tabi'een, he said that I've been informed that from when they call and they make a plea for Malik, the head of Jahannam, that he should do something for them. And when he responds to them, it's going to be a thousand years. Now you can get an idea about this, that when some company get a bit sick with you or they don't know how to respond to you because they've made a big, they've made a big uh, mistake or something like that and they don't want to deal with it, they just ignore your calls. You try to call them, they ignore your calls. You email them, they don't respond. And bad companies are known for that, that they don't respond in, you know, most companies I read about one company today and their average is that they will respond to you in 18 seconds from when you call, which is really, really good. But then there's others who say within 24 hours, some say within 48 hours. And some will say 30, 30 days. That's too much. But the idea with all of this is that they just have a non-caring attitude. That's what it shows. Why would somebody take pride in saying that we're going to respond to you within a day or within a few minutes? Right? Or all of our call center people are in the UK. Right, rather than being in the Philippines or in India or Pakistan or somewhere. It's all to show that they're eager to respond to you. And the worse that is, the longer it takes, then it just shows that they're not interested or they're not interested enough. So here it's going to be a thousand years before they even get a response. And when they get a response, it's going to be, call on, they're going to say, call on to your Lord. Because there's nobody, the, the, the response they're going to finally get from Malik, etc., is that you should just call to your Lord. Because there's nobody superior to him or better than him who can do anything for you. So they're going to say, okay. Then they will say this, which is in Surah Al Mu'minun, verse 106 to 107. <laughs> 
ربنا اخرجنا منها فان عدنا فانا ظالمون our lord our wretchedness has over overcome us we were definitely a deviant people our lord now take us out from here and if we were to repeat this then we would definitely be oppressors so then it says that he, the response to that will be allah say ikhsa'u fiha no you're going to remain in this state of loss in there don't even speak to me then it says that when allah says that to them because until now they had some hope because they probably never called uh, and asked before but now when allah says don't even speak to me fa in dhalik yaisu min kulli khair they will finally become despondent from attaining any kind of goodness that anything good is now going to happen from them that's going to become uh, that's going to no longer be an option for them wa in dhalik yaakhuduna fil hasra wa zafir wal wail what do you do after that so that is the moment it's like you know you try something and you fail you try something else and you fail but because you have many options in front of you while you have a you do suffer a setback you do feel a state of loss when you don't get success through your first method then you try the other one okay let's be calm let's think about it that's what you say let's think about it let's try something else let's uh, use uh, an intercessor uh, an intercessor let's get a contact let's see if we can uh, call the ombudsman let's see if we can call the local mp the local senator you know th- there's many ways in this world to do this but here when they see this finally that's the last straw then what do you do they're going to start shrieking they're going to start feeling an absolute sense of despondency and loss they're going to start shrieking and wailing and calling out woe be upon us etc this is related by imam tirmidhi from abu darda radiyallahu an then there's a, another narration from muhammad ibn ka'ab al quradi he puts all of these verses in perspective he says the people of hellfire will call out five times so there are five statements of five requests in four of them they there will be a response and in one of them in the fifth one there'll be nothing so then they can't speak afterwards so it's going to start with verse surah ghafir verse 11 they're going to start by saying rabbana amattana thnatayni wa ahyaytana thnatayni fa'tarafna bi dhunubina fa hal ila khurujin min sabil our lord you've given us death twice and you've given us life twice death in a sense we came from nothing we came into the world we then died and now we're awake again we're alive again and we have confessed our sins so now is there any room for exiting from this is there any way to exit from this we've done everything that we can do is there a way to exit from this so now in this one they get a response fayruddu alayhim ذَلِكُمْ بِأَنَّهُ إِذَا دُعِيَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ كَفَرْتُمْ وَإِنْ يُشْرَكْ بِهِ تُؤْمِنُوا That's the response to this first plea. That is because whenever Allah, will, Allah would have been called on alone, they would take partners. So whenever somebody wanted to be a monotheist, somebody wanted to call on only one Allah, as we do they would do they would be polytheists they would impart na others with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then it says wa in yushrak bihi tu'minu if anybody committed shirk with allah they would take part they would believe in that so that's the first response then they will change and they will say ربنا ابصرنا وسمعنا فارجعنا نعمل صالحا انا موقنون that's from surah as-sajda verse 12 our lord we've seen it now we've heard it let us return we will do good deeds we are firm believers now the response to this will be from surah as-sajda verse 13 ولو شئنا لاتينا كل نفس هداها had we wanted we would have given everybody their guidance it's not going to happen meaning we would have done that already this was a choice that you had if we had wanted you to be aware and we wanted to just make it all one without any choice and we would have done that already 
thereafter that they will well actually it carries on walu shi'na la tina kul nafsin hudaha and it carries on i'm just making it short then the third plea they will make the third uh, is from surah ibrahim rabbana akhirna ila ajalin qaribin nujib da'wataka wa nattabi'ir rusul our lord just give us a small amount of respite a small room of respite meaning give us a bit more time just a bit of time not the whole life maybe just a bit of time we will respond to your call we will follow your messengers that's in surah ibrahim but the response to that will be awalam takunu aqsamtum min qablu ma lakum min zawal didn't you for, didn't you used to take oaths earlier on before that there's going to be no end to this life and this life will continue so then they're going to say rabbana akhrijna na'mal salihan ghayra alladhi kunna na'mal surah fatir verse 37 our lord just let us out we will do good deeds totally different to what we used to do but allah will say the verse which i read earlier awalam nu'ammirkum ma yatadhakkaru fihi man tadhakkara wa ja'akum an-nadhir didn't we give you enough life already? Life long enough that any of you who wanted to think and reflect would have done so by now. And even the warner came to you as well. Then they're going to say, our Lord, you know, it's like we've, we've tried everything now. And there's nothing that's working for us. So now they're confessing. رَبَّنَا غَلَبَتْ عَلَيْنَا شِقْوَتُنَا وَكُنَّا قَوْمًا ضَالِّينَ رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ عُدْنَا فَإِنَّا ظَالِمُونَ Our Lord, our wretchedness has overtaken us. We were a deviant people. Our Lord, remove us from this. And if we're to re- repeat what we used to, we would then be oppressors. But the response will be, إِكْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ Remain in this wretched state of loss. You're not going to, don't even speak to me. And then it carries on. فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ And then eventually, وَكُنْتُمْ مِنْهَا تَضْحَكُونَ That when, whenever, you know, used to be given good, good things and everything, used to laugh and used to make a mockery and so on. After that, they will not be able to speak. That will be the last of it. So they will try a few times, which Allah mentions in the Qur'an. Thereafter that, Ibn Abi Hatim has transmitted from Abdullah ibn Amr radiyallahu an that the people of Hellfire will say, Ya Malik, just tell our Lord to end it. So it says that, according to this, it's going to be about 40 years before they're going to be left alone. And then it's going to be said, In the other one, it was a thousand years. In this, it says 40 years. Right? Five days is bad enough. SubhanAllah. You know. Then there's another narration. The Prophet ﷺ said that when the people of paradise will enter paradise and the people of hellfire would have entered hellfire, Allah will say, Ya Ahl al Jannah, O people of paradise, Kam labithtum fil ardi, adada sinin. How much did you, like meaning how many years, how long did you stay in the world for? Sounds like a long time. If you've lived for 70 years or 80 years, it sounds like a, a big amount of time. Allah will ask, because once you get into paradise and you start enjoying that, and then you get into hellfire and you see the life of the world, seems like it wasn't worth it, right? That indulgent barbecue wasn't worth it, because you got stomach problems the next day. Or that indulgent um, cheesecake was not worth it, because you got problems the next day, right? So it's going to be similar kind of feeling. So when the people of Paradise will be where Allah will say that to the people of paradise. They would say, We only stayed in the world for a day or a part of a day. Stayed for 70, 80, 90 years. They're going to say it's only a day or half a day or something. Why is that? Because it just feels like it was so fast based on now what we've got here. It doesn't matter anymore. And so then Allah will say to them, نِعْمَ مَا مَتَّجَرْتُمْ فِي يَوْمٍ أَوْ بَعْضِ يَوْمٍ رَحْمَتِي وَرِضْوَانِي وَجَنَّتِي أُمْكُثُوا فِيهَا خَالِدِينَ مُخَلَّدِينَ What a beautiful, what a wonderful business. How much of a great profit you've made. 
you know, what a wonderful business that you've done. That you only work for a day or stayed in the world and work, toiled for a day or half a day. Because that's what you're going to feel now. In this world, it seems too long. Man, I have, we have to do this for the next 20, 30, 50, 50, 60, 70 years. Avoid this, avoid that, do this, do that. But if we do, then when we get there, then it's going to be, Allah is going to, Allah is going to say that what a good business in just a day or half a day. You get my mercy, my satisfaction, and you get my gardens. Now you can remain in here for absolute eternity, eternity forever. Then he's going to say the same thing to the people of hellfire. كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ سِنِينَ قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أو بعضهم. They're going to say the same thing. We only stayed in the world for a day or half a day. It's just not going to be worth it. We didn't stay there enough. It wasn't enough, right? So then Allah will say to them that what a bad trade. What, 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 a, what a really bad business you got yourself into. What a loss-making business for that day or half a day. You get my anger my disobedience and you get my hellfire now you can stay in here for hell, uh, forever so then they're going to say Rabbana akhrijna minha oh our Lord take us out of here if we're to repeat this then we would be oppressors like give us another chance it's like we didn't know this that it was so bad it's like once we had a student for half a year he didn't produce any work for half a year he didn't produce any work when we realized that he's not going to make it we called him uh, after that half time, he said, we're going to have to let you go. So then, it's really strange. He said afterwards, he said, you should have told me you're going to let me go. Then I would have done some work. <laughs> it was like, what a... It's like, we have to tell you? Like, you, you not, that's what, isn't that what you're here? You signed up for the course? Like, he had signed up for the course himself, paid a lot of money for it. He wasn't forced into it. Didn't do any work. Didn't, he used to attend the classes, but did not produce any work. Didn't, never did any homework for, for half a year. And that was a very, you can say, an output-based course. I mean, it's not worth just sitting in the class. You know, you'd have to produce something to get there. So when he said, after half a year, he said, you should have told me earlier, you're going to let me go. <laughs> SubhanAllah, like, what were you thinking until now? A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Billah. So that's similar. I mean, these people are going to say, just let us go. And then if we now mess around again, then we're going to be oppressors. So what have you been doing until now? So you be at loss in there. You don't even speak. That's going to be their last discussion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high. Then after that, there's another narration from Ibn Masood the Allahu an. إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ أَنْ لَا يَخْرُجَ مِنْهَا أَحَدٍ when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no longer wants anybody to come out of hellfire, because remember, there's going to be people coming out of the hellfire uh, based on intercession, based on the mercy of Allah, and, and so on and so forth. We've got numerous hadith about that. But when everybody's out that Allah wants to take out, and there's those that stand no chance, Allah will ghayyara wujuhahum wa alwanahum. Allah will uh, essentially disfigure them. Their color, their facial, their face, uh, and everything will be changed. So now, a believer will come who's got the right of intercession. He's got a few free tickets. You know, you have like a few free tickets you can bring. I'll give you five tickets. You can bring five people. So he's now going. He's got some tickets left. He comes along uh, to, to check it out and uh, to see if he knows anybody he can pull out of there. So he looks around into hellfire. He can't see anybody. He doesn't recognize anybody to take out. Right? He's looking for somebody he can recognize. Now, one of the people that, should that he should have recognized calls out to him, says, Oh, so-and-so, I am so-and-so. You know, your neighbor or your friend or your classmate or your business partner or whatever it is. Saying, I don't know you. You don't look like anybody I know. Ya Allah. That, that's when those people in Hellfire will say, yeah, will just call out to Allah when they realize the helplessness of their situation. That, Ya Allah, just take us out and let us go out and do something. And then if we're to still re return to doing what we used to do, then we would be oppressors. But then Allah will say no. So it looks like this is going to happen. Uh, now, then the cover will be put on them. They will be nailed down. And then nobody will come out of it again. There's some other hadiths which tell us another aspect of this. That the people of hellfire will hang on to some kind of hope. 
they will have some kind of hope until a certain event will take place. When that event takes place, they'll realize that there is no hope after this. So it's in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُجَاءُ بِالْمَوْتِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كَأَنَّهُ كَبْشٌ أَمْلَحْ Death will be brought along. Death will be carried and brought in front of everybody on the Day of Judgment. As though it's um, an animal for slaughter. Like, you know, you bring a sheep or a ram or a goat. Um, you bring them uh, to be slaughtered. And it will be placed in front of paradise and hellfire. In between the two. So they both can see it. And then an announcement will be made that people of paradise, do you know what this is? They're going to be kind of looking around and then they're going to eventually figure it out and say, yes, this is death. They'll be able to figure out this is death. It's been, death is obviously an abstract idea. It means the loss of life. But here it's put into this, this model here. And they're going to recognize it. So it'll be re the response will be, yes, this is death. And then the command will be given, so it will be slaughtered. So there'll be some kind of slaughter that will take place, as though death is being destroyed. Like, I mean, what a... I'm not even sure how to explain that, like how to think of that. How do you destroy death, essentially? Because we know death as absence of life, but this is Allah's ability to destroy death. Then after that, an announcement is going to be made. Oh, people of paradise, eternity, no death for you. Uh, the same will be called out to the people of hellfire. People of hellfire, do you know what this is? They'll figure it out as well. So when the death is then slaughtered, and Allah makes that decision, and He calls out, well, it will be stated, I mean, somebody else is going to call out, it looks like, to the people of paradise. People of paradise, eternity, no death. People of hellfire, eternity for you as well and no death. Then Allah, the Prophet sallallahu recited, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Surah to Maryam, verse 39. Warn them of the day of hasra. يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ that means the day of loss, the day of despondency, the day when there's no longer any hope, when the matter will be fully decided and completed. But they are in a state of heedlessness. They don't believe. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about. Imam Tirmidhi has got a similar narration to the one in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, but in that it just says, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَضَى لِأَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ بِالْحَيَاةِ وَالْبَقَاءِ لَمَاتُوا فَرَهًا وَلَوْلَا أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَضَى لِأَهْلِ النَّارِ بِالْحَيَاةِ وَالْبَقَاءِ لَمَاتُوا تَرَهًا This is going to be such a moment when all of this happens that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not made a judgment for the people of paradise to remain alive and endure that forever, they would have died at this point, out of happiness. So much happiness that they would have just been overwhelmed with it and they would have died. But they're not going to die because Allah wants them to live. Likewise, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not decreed for the people of hellfire to also continue with their life and endure in that punishment, they would have died in absolute grief. But there's no death anymore. So the situation will be such that it would have caused death, but they're not going to be able to die. So then there's another narration from Imam Ahmad, Imam Tirmidhi, Ibn, and Ibn Majah, which is of a similar content from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. A slight difference. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says in there that the people of hellfire will be anticipating, will be fearful. They'll also be concerned and fearful. They've got into paradise. How long are you going to be staying here for? Right? How, how much can we do here? How long can we stay here for? They're going to be concerned that they may be taken out of here, out of this beautiful state and joy that they're in. 
And the people of Hellfire will be the same. They'll also be waiting, hoping to get in a better place, hoping that the situation will become better for them. But then when death is slaughtered between them, nothing like that will happen. Thereafter that in Bukhari and Muslim, there's a hadith from Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, similar narration, except that in this one it says that when Allah says whatever he says, and he makes that announcement that you will stay in here forever, then the people of paradise will increase in their happiness and their joy and pleasure over what they've already started to enjoy. You know, you go into a resort and there's all the wonderful food. You can choose whatever food you want. It's available 24-7, different forms of food and drink and burgers and... Um, special chocolates, you know, exquisite. Then you've got various different types of pools. You've got, you know, a whole theme park there. You've got roller coaster rides. You've got the beach. You've got uh, a water park. You've got the seaside. You've got an eternity pool, infinity pool or whatever you call it. You've got everything. You're like, how many days do I need to go into this? Like if you imagine, it's got everything. I need a month to even try everything out. In paradise, it's going to be a lot more than that. So now, can you imagine how happy they are already? I've got so much to do here. They're very happy. They're so, totally excited. But when Allah says this to them, that's going to increase in their happiness. Even more. May Allah place us among them. But then with the people of Hellfire, they're just worried about everything. You know, sometimes you're put into a spot somewhere, you're traveling somewhere, you end up at some really bad airport, like some dingy airport. Can't even buy a sandwich there, right? But you know that you've got a flight out. Okay, maybe you have to stay 24 hours there. Find a bench to sleep on, you know, maybe find a floor to sleep on eventually because there's no hotels, there's nothing that you can do down there. You're stuck there. Right? And then you're told you're going to have to stay here for a long time. You can imagine then. When you know that you're going to go out, you can make yourself at least get through it. Right. There's another narration from Ibn Abi Dunya. It says that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu once went, walked past a little mount, a little, uh, little hill of sand. Small kind of mound of sand. Maybe, you know, this long. I mean, even a little mound of sand, just about this high. How many grains of sand do you think are in there? If you get hold of dry sand, just in your palm, how many grains do you think are in there? Thousands. And a little mound, you can imagine. So what he says, when he went past this, he actually started crying. Now, he went past sand and he started crying. What he started crying for? Right? Why are you crying, Ya Amir al muminin He said, when I saw this sand, look where his mind goes. He says, I remember the people of Hellfire. Why do you remember the people of Hellfire? He said, okay, if they were going to stay in Hellfire for a, forever, which means the number of the grains of this sand, let's just say five million grains of sand, right? So five million grains of sand. If that was what it was meant, that they would be staying in there forever, meant five million days or five million years, then at least they would have had some kind of date that they could anticipate and look towards even if it's millions of years okay fine this will eventually come to that's how humans are like you okay it's going to be 10 years it's going to be 15 years no problem but it's not several million grains it's not several million days or years it is absolutely forever there is nothing to look forward to. Now to some more positive positivity. <clears throat> the disobedient believers. Believers who have been disobedient, who have been sent to hellfire. Now a bit about them, a chapter on them. Imam Ahmad has a hadith from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that one of the <clears throat> slaves of Allah in hellfire is going to be calling for about a thousand years. 
Ya Hannan, Ya Mannan, O compassionate and O <clears throat> benevolent one. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hear that and say to Jibreel alayhi salam, you know, go along and bring me this servant of mine. Out, out of all of those people, multitude of people, Allah is going to say, go and bring this guy. So Jibreel alayhi salam will go and he'll see all the people in hellfire, all crying and wailing. Not just him, but all the others. So he'll go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inform him of what he's seen. Maybe to say, is there more people or whatever the situation. Allah will say, just bring him to me. Because he is in a certain place. So he'll bring him then. He'll be stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will say to him, Ya Abdi, my slave, my servant, كَيْفَ وَجَدْتَ makanak? How have you found your situation? He will say, Ya Rabbi, Sharru Makan wa Sharru Maqil, the worst of places, the worst of places to rest. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Okay, take him back. Take my servant back. He just wanted to bring him out for that moment. So when he will say, Okay, now take him back. Then he'll, that person will say, Ya Rabbi, ما كنت أرجو إذا أخرجتني منها أن تردني. I never imagined that if you ever took me out of there that you would take me, let me go back in there. That's all the ma'rifah that Allah is waiting for. If a person knows even that much, that's going to benefit. That's why knowing Allah is of benefit in this world. And the more we know Allah, the more chances we have of survival. Now this person is in hellfire for a thousand years. But because now he just says this at the right time, that my Lord, I would never have imagined that you'd send me back in there after you've taken me out. So Allah says, okay, leave him now. Let him go out. Allah just wants to see that we've recognized him. Imam Tirmidhi has another narration from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there's going to be two people among those who've been sent to hellfire and their shrieks are going to become really, really in in intense. They're crying, they're wailing. It's going to become very intense. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, take them out for me. So they'll be taken out. They'll be brought out. And Allah will say to them, why are you shrieking so much? Why are you crying so much in there? So they'll say, well, we, we've been screaming like this and shrieking like this so that you have mercy on us. You know, they're invoking Allah's mercy. They know Allah is very generous. If He's giving them a chance to speak, then it means that He wants to give them something. So then Allah will say that my mercy to you is that you go along and you throw yourself <clears throat> where you were in hellfire. That's what my mercy demands. So now they know that they have to be saves of Allah. So they go. One of them will throw himself back into hellfire. And when he does that, it will be cool. It will be a form of escape for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to just see that he does his bidding. The other one, now you see, this is a really, really interesting hadith because it goes to show how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives people who do complete opposite things because of the state of their heart. Because they've got awareness of Allah in their heart. So this guy goes and does what Allah tells him. And he gets freed. The other one goes up there and he hesitates and he says, I'm not going to throw myself in there. He, do, he refuses to go back in there. He's not being forced in, he's being told to go in. He refuses to go in. So then Allah is going to say to him, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you going in? What's stopping you? Your friend threw himself in. Why aren't you doing that? Your companion. So this person is going to say, he's got a different reason. He's going to say, that after you took me out, I would not think, I would, I'd never thought that you would throw me back in there. And I've heard, I used to hear some bayans, I used to hear some scholars saying, you know, and that if Allah takes you out, and so on, probably something like that's where he probably got it from. Otherwise, where is he going to get this knowledge from? That I never thought you would tell me to go back in, that's why I'm hesitating. So Allah will say, absolutely, for you is what you hope for. For you is what you have determined. They will both then be entered into paradise, through the mercy of Allah, most majestic, 
and most mighty. Now that just goes to show that all that Allah wants is the state of your heart. You may have done wrong, but as long as you've done, as long as the heart is there, as long as there's no justification of the wrong, as long as there's some kind of state of knowledge of Allah, that I cannot disobey Him like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us. May Allah allow us. May Allah have mercy upon us. Now, the interaction between the people of paradise and the people of hellfire. People are in paradise now, others are in hellfire. These were the people kind of in between who are being shifted back and forth. But what about direct conversation between people of paradise and hellfire? There is going to be some of that and it's mentioned in the Quran. So in Surah Al-A'raf, there's quite a few verses there, right? Where Allah talks about this in great detail. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ أَنْ قَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدَنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّا فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّا قَالُوا نَعَمْ فَأَذَّنَ مُؤَذِّنٌ بَيْنَهُمْ اللَّعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ And it carries on. Essentially what Allah is saying here is that the people of paradise are going to call out to the people of hellfire and they're going to say that they're going to declare to them that we found what our Lord had promised us to be truth. We found it to be truth. Or whatever He promised us, we found it to be a reality. Did you find whatever your Lord had promised you, did you find that to be truthful as well? So they will respond and say yes. So you can see that there's some conversations which have been facilitated between them. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about it the other way around. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ أَفِيضُوا عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَهُمَا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ The people of hellfire will call out to the people of paradise and say just pour some of that water that Allah has given you. Just pour some of that upon us or anything from what Allah has provided you. But their response is going to be that Allah has made this haram and unlawful upon the disbelievers. Those are the verses in the Quran. Sufyan ibn Uyayna <clears throat> has transmitted from Sa'id ibn Jubair from ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu regarding this verse, that there's going to be a man who's going to call out to his brother, right, that I'm completely burnt. So, He's got a brother in paradise, mashallah. He's going to call out to him. So now pour some of that water over me. So somebody, the angel or whoever it is, will say to his brother, go and respond to him. So he'll respond and saying, I'm really sorry, but Allah has prohibited all of that for the disbelievers. Another version says that the people of hellfire will be calling, oh, people of paradise. So first, they won't even respond to them. When he says, oh people, it probably won't be random. It'll probably be somebody they know in paradise. So they won't respond to them first. Then after that, they'll be permitted to respond. That you can now respond to them. But by this time, وَقَدْ قُتِعَ الرَّحِيمُ وَالرَّحْمَةِ According to this, there's no longer any kinship ties that you feel. Like it's my brother, or my sister, or my mother, or father, or son, or daughter, or my uncle. Nor is there any mercy. It's not allowed. It's all in the hands of Allah. The in time of intercession is gone, I think. So the people of paradise will say, and this could be speaking to their own brother or father or somebody, Ya Ahl al-Nar, alaykum la'natullah. O people of hellfire, for you is the curse of Allah. Ya Ahl al-Nar, alaykum ghadabullah. People of hellfire, upon you is the anger of Allah. O people of hellfire, la labbaykum wa la sa'adaykum. No labbaik for you. No fortune for you. ماذا تقولون? What do you want? So they'll say, أَلَمْ نَكُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا آبَاءُكُمْ أَلَمْ نَكُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا آبَاءَكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَإِخْوَانَكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتَكُمْ Weren't we in the world your father, your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your family members, your tribe people? They will say, yes, of course. So then they'll say, pour some water over us. أَفِيدُوا عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ Oh, mimma razaqakum Allah. Give us some of what Allah has given you. Share some of this with, you, with, with us. And they'll say, no, Allah has prohibited it from the disbelievers. These are to you one's own brother or sister or father. Let us never see this day. May Allah bring all of our family into the faith strongly, steadfastly.
Allah says in another verse in Surah Al-Safat, فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِينَ يَقُولُ أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا وَعِظَامًا أَإِنَّا لَمَبْعُوثُونَ You should read those verses, verse 50 to 56. You should ponder over them when you get a chance. That they will turn to one another, they will face one another to ask some questions to one another. One of them will say, <clears throat> I used to have a very, very, very close associate. And he used to say, aren't you going to be one of those to confirm? Maybe <clears throat> this is a righteous person who's got a friend, a neighbor, a brother, somebody else who's not on the path. They're trying to remind them once in a while. They get angry with them and so on. So that person is going to say, yes, I did have a friend like this. He used to say to me, أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ are you going to be one of those who will, uh, who, who, who will confirm the message? So then he would respond and say something like, you think we're going to be resurrected? You think after we've become totally decomposed that we're going to come back to life? Us and our parents, you think we're all going to come back? They never believed in the hereafter. See, one of the most important things is the belief in the hellfire. Belief in, sorry, the hereafter. The belief in resurrection. It's a very powerful very, very stabilizing, very, <clears throat> very important belief that is. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Without that, the faith isn't complete. You can't have a faith without belief in the hereafter. Because that's our worldview that we will eventually move into another world. It can't just be this world. Even if you just do good in this world, you don't believe in the hereafter, you get nothing. The hereafter is a very sobering idea. It's a very necessary idea. That is what brings light to the life. That's why Imam Ahmed uh, narrates from Sha'bi. A group of the people of paradise will look upon the uh, group of the people of hellfire and they'll say, Malakum fin nar, why are you in hellfire? Why are you in the hellfire? We used to do what you used to tell us. So they would say, yes, we would teach you we wouldn't do it ourselves. May Allah protect us. That doesn't mean that you give up teaching people. Because you're going to be in hellfire anyway. Somebody's going to say, oh, that means that I shouldn't teach anyone. You're not in there because you used to teach them and not doing it yourself. You're in there because you didn't do it yourself. Whether you taught somebody or not. Maybe the fact that you taught somebody, if it was for good purpose, then as long as you're teaching people. See, I got a question today that <clears throat> I teach people, but... I always break my, you know, I always mess up myself. Is that hypocrisy? I said, no, that's not hypocrisy. We all make mistakes. It's only a prophet that can do it perfectly like that. We all make mistakes. As long as you're not telling people and saying, no, I'm going to do it. I'm just telling them to show that I'm a good person, but I'm not really a good person. I want to do the wrong. That's when it's a problem. But if somebody is trying their best, but they fall once in a while, they fail sometimes. That's forgiven, that's normal, that's what happens. You can, you can fail. That doesn't mean you stop. And they say that if it wasn't, if you could not invite others and you could not exhort others and advise others unless you were perfect yourself, then after the Prophet ﷺ, nobody would have been able to do so. He's the only one at perfection. There's a huge benefit in telling others. Okay, the last few things here. There's a number of narrations that are very similar to this. Now, Kaab uh, reports that between the people of Hellfire and the people of Jannah, there's going to be these windows, these look outposts, these vista points. Right? Anytime a person of paradise wants to look at his enemy in Hellfire, he'll be able to do that. So, this is talking about people who are oppressed who eventually got to paradise, and those who oppress them they'd be able to look at them and see them and feel better that, you know, alhamdulillah, I got, you know, after the persecution and the oppression. You know, may Allah grant this to the people of Paradise, uh, Palestine. <clears throat> We've read this, I covered this hadith in our series on paradise, right? Every believer in paradise is going to, be, going to have five 
various different exits or entrances or yeah, openings right, to his abode in which they live. Uh, from one will come the angels, they're visitors of the angels that bring them different gifts or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala messages or whatever. Another door that will be for their maidens. Right? This is from a man's perspective. You know, for, for a female, it will be different. Right? Then another door which is locked or a, an exit point which is locked. That's going to be the exit point to the people of Hellfire. But whenever they want, they want to look at their enemy or whoever it is, they're able to open that to look or just feel, make themselves content that I'm not there. They'll be able to open that and look. And what's the fourth door for? Door for? The fourth door is the one that they go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from. You know, every Friday they go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so now Allah says in Surah Al-Muttafifin, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ Those who had believed of the disbelievers, meaning those who then became Muslim, they will be laughing and they'll be relaxing in their pavilions and so on. Right? So Ibn Abbas عنه, says that these pavilions where they will be sitting and so on will be between Hellfire and Paradise. And the people of paradise will open up their doors and these people who are sitting on those pavilions will look at the people of hellfire about how they're being punished and they're going to laugh at that. That is where it says that for every person will be a gladness of their eyes. So anybody who'd been persecuted and oppressed in the world, they'll look at their enemies and they'll see them in the hellfire and that will make them pleased. This is the reward they're getting for all of the oppression that they had. And finally, Anas radiallahu anhu reports that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there's going to be a people, there's going to be a person from paradise who's going to be looking on the day of judgment at the people of hellfire. So a person of the hellfire will call on to him, somebody he's supposed to know. Ya fulan, hal ta'rifuni? Oh, so and so, do you know me? So the person is going to say, la wallahi la a'rifuka. Wallahi, I don't know who you are. I don't recognize Manant. Who are you? So then the person is going to say, You're the person who was going past and you were really thirsty and you asked me for water. And I gave you some water to drink. One day I was really thirsty and the shopkeeper, he gave me this water to drink. So then the person will say, Intercede for me by your Lord. So then this person will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and intercede. Ya Rabbi, shafi'ni fi. Give me intercession for him. So then he'll say, yes, you can intercede for him. So he will be taken out of hellfire. Do good things for others. And maybe that will help one day on the day of judgment as well. Imagine for just some water that you've given somebody. Now, puts in perspective that hadith about that prostitute woman who gave the dog to drink through her shoe she gets forgiven as well right none of this is guaranteed but it definitely ex magnifies our chances may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us may Allah increase us may Allah enhance us may Allah grant us steadfastness may Allah grant us absolute protection and may Allah grant us preparedness for paradise before we die وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. جزاك الله خير for listening. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you. And if you're finding this useful, you know, as they say, do that like button and subscribe button and forward it on to others. جزاك الله خير. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.